Hello and welcome. Today we are going to talk about how to install Red Hat Code Ready containers in macOS. I'm Luca Burton and welcome in today's episode of Ansible Pilot. What is Red Hat Code Ready containers and why is it important for you? So it is an OpenShift 4 cluster for local development, which means that all the components of OpenShift cluster could run on a single machine. Technically, this is achieved by running all the components under one virtual machine. This has the pros to be everything in one single file and the cons that the performance are a bit uh, degraded. However, this is a great flexibility for local developers that want to try the code before running in a full cluster. The code-ready containers require at least 4 virtual CPUs, 8 GB of RAM memory, and 35 gigabyte of storage space. As usual, the more the better. But I'm sure that every modern development machine meets this requirement. Let's move to a quick demo how to install Red Hat Code Ready container in macOS. Let's have fun! Wait a minute, where could you find more information about the setup process in the official Red Hat Developers blog? There is this wonderful article that uh, summarizes the minimum resources of 4 CPU, 8GB of RAM, 35GB of storage, and all the steps to download, install the first configuration and the start of OpenShift 4 cluster on your laptop. So basically it installs everything that is needed to use. Actually, a fully fledged OpenShift 4 cluster is a bit slow because everything run under your notebook. So it's not like a real cluster, but you can interact with a real OpenShift command. As you can see, you can interact with OC command line utility and everything is like the real one. This is very great for developers or DevOps that want to try everything on their own hardware. The first step is to go straightly to Red Hat Container website. As you can see, there is a lot of information about uh, how to configure this wonderful uh, tool and also more information about Red Hat uh, OpenShift. But the first step is actually to hit the Install OpenShift on your laptop button. This will lead you to one page that allows you to select the operating system, Linux, macOS, Windows, and start the download process. This file, in my case, is 3 GB, so ensure you have enough capacity on your hard drive before starting. Another thing, you need to download the pull secret that is a key that associated to your unique account, and will, this will be very useful during the setup phase. Next thing, as you can see, the download is just started and it's going to take a while because it's a file of 3 gigabyte dimension. So this is a good moment to grab a coffee and review the setup instruction. When the download is completed, you are going to expect this setup file in your directory, in my case under the desktop. So let me open it and the installer is going to start. 
just a few seconds and we are waiting this uh, new window popping up in our screen after the verification or oh, let me move it was on the other screen oh this is the install of code ready container 1.39 on your computer let's move on after accepting the license agreement this is a standard apache license 2.0 as you can see is going to ex request one formal agreement and is going to use 3 gigabyte of the storage space of your computer okay let me write my password here we go the installation went very smooth now is going to copy all the file on my computer it's going to take a while as you can see and after this uh, install we are going to have fun on the console with crc command here we go code ready is done and now the fun began once the setup is completed we could move to our terminal and use the crc command to complete the installation as you can see there are several options but the first one is crc setup okay let's check it out with status that is uh, not running and the first question is uh, we we would like to contribute or no with anonymous user statistic i choose yes because i think it's a good thing to share with developers with this data is anonymous so why not uh, the next step is actually to download the bundle that uh, has all the needed uh, uh, the needed file library whatever to emulating the cpu and everything this archive is 18.70 uh, yeah so nearly 12 gigabyte of size so the download speed takes a while depending on uh, your network connection your workstation performances as you can see this is uh, the live time and there is this progress bar that actually is downloaded the QCow image so the QCow if you if you know is a very popular format to storing virtual disk image from a vi for virtual machine so this is the real size of a virtual machine that is going to be downloaded and is the as inside all the component of Red Hat OpenShift I really like this type of setup because it's mostly unattended we basically don't need to do nothing only way to download the file but uh, if you consider the code ready it was 3 gigabyte before for this utility plus 12 gigabyte so it's quite demanding on the storage space once the setup is completed we could move to the following step that is running the crc start to activate the new virtual environment on our machine this is going to run the virtual machine with inside all the container daemon and whatever so let's start the fun CSC start and we are going to use this tool all the time we need to copy and paste our key this is the pull code just copy and paste from the text file that we downloaded from the website before the installation is going to proceed with all the necessary steps as you can see it's going to take a while to turn on the cube api server setting up uh, creating a new ssh key for con entering in the machine i was speeding up uh, this video because also on my machine it took a while to setting up all the necessary users and settings and once this 
OpenShift cluster finally turn on is going to take a while to stabilize and verify that all the services and operators are actually fully working. As you can see, these are this service run all in one virtual machine. So double check that no other services like for example VirtualBox, VMware are not uh, running on this machine. Otherwise, uh, of course, they got a collision and you, the installation is not going successful. But you need only basically to wait till uh, on the terminal is going to appear your newly username and password and all the URL to connect and interact with a new OpenShift cluster. As you can see, operator authentication shown is progressing and a lot of services under the hood are going to be setting up. So basically, we just need to wait and the cluster is going to be up with all the service that we need. This process takes a while, only the first time we run, the next run will be very fast because uh, everything was already setting up. So don't worry too much if the first run is more slow than expected. And here we go, we have everything. On screen you can see the URL of the web console and also the terminal. So let me authenticate as a developer on the API CSC testing and show you that OC command help is going to give us all the necessary tools to manage the OpenShift cluster. So let's suppose that, for example, we would like to check it out the status with OC status. Oh, damn it, this is developer user that has limited permission. But what about create a new project? Uh, maybe with a dash between new and project, I will be more successful and also specify one name. For example, example. Yay, we did. And now let's take a look also of the web UI. I did only a copy and paste from my terminal and this is my OpenShift web UI. Developer is the password or user developer. No, I don't want to save. Or oh, maybe I was typing in developer. Here we go. Oh. Oh, wonderful! As you can see, I have a full panel and I have also a project for this user. Project example that we created on the command line. As you can see, look like uh, a complete OpenShift cluster, but everything actually run inside the virtual machine of your workstation. So, isn't great? I think so. Thank you, Red Hat. Wait a minute, how to check it out the status of the cluster with OC status. As you can see, there are uh, here the classical status of uh, OpenShift, but also I can use a CRC status to control actually the code ready. Have also some insight of the disk usage and other parameters. So at the moment, the OpenShift uh, cluster is running and the CRC virtual machine is running. But what about if we would like to stop because uh, I don't think you want uh, this service to run all the time, just uh, spinning up uh, as needed. With CRC stop command you are able to control actually this virtual machine and just in case you want to save some space uh, you can always do CRC delete to actually uh, delete everything, all the configuration and start from uh, zero. So now I have a confirmation that uh, the OpenShift cluster is stopped and uh, if I type again CRC status, everything is stopped. How to start? The fun, 
let me do with CSC start so every time that I need an OpenShift cluster for doing my test, testing my code or whatever, I just need only to do CSC start again. And this time is going to be very much faster than the previous one because I need only to restore the previous state of the virtual machine and not uh, starting again all the service as before. The SSH key will be already authenticated, so just start the services and the operator inside the OpenShift cluster. And that's it. So, good job, Red Hat. I think this is, might be very useful to test OpenShift and in general a lot of Kubernetes application in a simple Mac notebook or desktop. Now you know how to install Red Hat code ready containers in macOS. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to know more about how to automate your day to day life as a system administrator and how to use successfully the Ansible technology, subscribe to channel, write me a message and thumbs up always. And have a wonderful day!